Welcome back and welcome to the hypest, most exciting video in the entire world on traffic lights. Today, I'm gonna to be breaking down the traffic light I built for my upcoming traffic puzzle game. Now, as always, we need a plan. There's a few things we need to be successful. Obviously, we need a 3D model. We need a representation of the actual traffic light. Number two is a texture. We need it to look good. It needs to be yellow, like most traffic lights. The third thing we need is a material slash shader, and that is what is going to give it the look. And the final and fourth thing we need is a blueprint slash state machine. So this is what is going to control the logic of what light is on at what time, right? So there's a red state, there's gonna be a red phase, there's gonna be a green phase, there's gonna be a turning arrow phase, and that blueprint state machine is basically gonna control what's being shown. So let's talk about the 3D model for a little bit. We need to figure out what it's actually gonna look like. So for, for my game, we don't really need a, there's no yellow state, there's no amber or, or slow down state, there's just red, green, and the turning arrow, like this. But we know that these are exactly, pretty much identical, other than the fact that they are different, going to be different colors. So we actually only need one of these. So first off, there's a part I'm calling the case. This is kind of like the enclosure that houses or it would house all of like the electronics for the light. Next up is the hood or the covering. And finally, there's the lamp. The first is the dome, and that's gonna be the sheet of glass or plastic that's kind of covering, um, that's covering the, the, the lamp itself or the LED panel. And then finally, the panel itself that is going to be showing what color it is. So this here's my first iteration of the traffic light. I'm going for a low poly aesthetic for the game. And while this is technically low poly, it also doesn't look very good. I spent a lot of tr time trying to figure out how to smooth these faces out. So the reason why they look like this is because each one of these rectangles is emitting a single normal. And so a normal is basically this vector that points perpendicularly to the face. And that's what the rendering engine uses to determine how the light interacts with it. And in this case, how the light is kind of reflecting off of that into, into the screen. So because each of these rectangles only have like a single normal, it means that we're gonna get that blocky look because there's for this entire area of the rectangle, there's only one light vector, if you will, coming off of it. And that's what gives us this um, this blocky look. So I spent a ton of time trying to research and figure out how to make this smooth. I learned how to bake normals and so baking normals basically means you take your low poly object, create a high poly version of it, and then use that high poly information baked into an image file or a texture file that then gets used with the low poly model and then it basically tricks the screen into displaying the information from the image rather than the information from the actual mesh or the object. Now, this is normally what you would do to, to smooth things out. Um, I just couldn't get it to look good. Um, these cylinders are, are pretty tricky, as I found out, when it comes to, to baking normals. So I was bashing my head against the wall until I found this neat little, little blender trick called Auto Smooth. And it basically does exactly what I want with one button. So after a few different iterations, this is the final traffic light that I settled on. So the next step is what's called UV mapping. So the U and the V represents the axes of the image. You're probably wondering, well, why not X and Y? Well, that's because X, Y, and Z are already used to represent the model in 3D space. We use U and V when we're talking about the 2D space. In Blender, it's really easy to generate UV maps automatically, especially with objects like this that are very simple. We select all of the object, go to UV, and Smart UV Project, and usually it's a pretty good result because we will be displaying the light information 
on this pane, we need to make sure that there's no warping going on with the face, that it's just completely center and flat. We need to make two materials. The first one will be a glass or translucent material for the dome. And the second will be our LED panel. So jumping into Photoshop, I've got a 96 pixel by 96 pixel mask for the LED nodes. These are gonna be the individual LEDs. And then I've got one for the left arrow, same size, 96 by 96. Now jumping into Unreal, we've imported the traffic light. It looks great. So the first material is the glass material. Now, I can't take any credit for this myself. I did not make this glass one. Uh, it's, not com it's not completely original work. Um, I really had no idea where to start. Uh, just so I just Googled how to make glass material in Unreal Engine, and then I, I found this great tutorial. So this material is what's known as a parent material. And in the parent material, there's obviously the material graph, as well as these parameters, various different parameters. Here is what's called a material instance. So this is an instance of the parent material. It doesn't have a material graph, but what it does have is these parameters are now exposed to us. So a material instance gives us a way to modify the parent material and not have to wait for that material to recompile. We can make changes on the fly and see those changes in real time. So this is the glass material instance that we are using for the dome on the traffic light. So this differs from the base material in a few different ways. One in which it's a bit darker. So we've, we've definitely darkened the um, the sphere based on the some opacity values and we set a refraction to straight up be one so we're get I was getting a little bit of weird artifacting going on when we had the default refraction settings so just set those values to one and um, the the problems went away so the second material is the LED panel material there are two channels we care about the base color literally the base color of the material and then the emissive color makes the color appear as if it's like radiating or glowing. So this is the entire material for our LED panel. If you're not familiar with Unreal, this looks pretty complicated. If you are familiar with Unreal, you realize this is actually pretty straightforward compared to how, um, how difficult some shaders or some materials can, um, can appear we are effectively taking the LED mask, so that, that circle that we created in Photoshop, and we're more or less just multiplying that by 64 times. So we get a grid of 64 by 64 little LEDs. And we multiply that by like straight up a color. And so that multiplication, remember a mask is ones and zeros. So a something, times zero is nothing, something times one is something, right? Quick math, straightforward. So when we multiply that color with this texture, we just get um, green circles surrounded by black. Then as we kind of go into this area here, we multiply the result by an emissive value. So the default emissive value here is three, and then we're eventually plugging that into, into the emissive color node. But you'll notice here is if we increase this emissive value from three to let's say, and as we go up, the more it glow, or it's gonna re-render. And so this, this is a perfect example of why it's better to, to make modifications in a material instance. So you don't have to worry about the material having to recompile. But we've increased that emissive value to 85. Let's go to 100 just to see the difference between um, the, the emissiveness of that, of that material. So yeah, it's, it's glowing just like you'd expect LEDs would. We've got our arrow mask here as an input parameter. And we're doing 
more or less the same thing as we did in the stage of the LED circle. We're making it tile because it's actually too big. We need to, we need to change the size and make it a bit smaller. Another thing we're doing with this is we are using the some tiling parameters. So we're actually changing the, the U and the V tiling position of the arrow because we want to center it, right? And, and it's important to have those parameters exposed. This isn't the final result. Remember, this is just the, this is the parent material. We'll get to the final result in the instance. So we basically take that and then we multiply it by this sphere mask. So the sphere mask is straight up just a sphere that masks out anything that's not in the sphere. So we don't want the extra arrows, we just want one arrow. So that's what we're doing. And that eventually makes its way down here and gets plugged into the material. Arrow, material, instance. We're not passing any new texture parameters into it. We're changing the emissive from 3 or 85 to 300. We've scaled it a bit so that it's it can fit onto um or sorry this is the pixel scale so we can actually change the size of the um, individual leds with the pixel scale um, the sphere radius obviously is changing you know the radius of, of the sphere around the arrow and um you know we've got the we've got the color input amount here and that is the arrow material instance the red or the stop version of the material. Very similar, but this time instead of the arrow, I'm just changing the mask to be our circle, right? The LED circle, we can reuse this circle. So instead of an arrow, it's a circle. The color is red, the emissive value is a bit different, the scale and tiling is a bit different, but it's more or less the same. So when I was in Photoshop making these masks, I actually found by default in Creative Cloud Photoshop, there are these custom shapes of like wild animals, trees, boats, and flowers. So I thought, what, what would it look like if we made an elephant on a, like an elephant crossing traffic light? So we'll import the elephant mask. We'll create a new material instance. We'll call this MLED instance elephant. We'll change the mask from the arrow. to be the elf. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then we'll change the color to be like a gray. <laughs> and there, and there's the elephant crossing. <laughs> Amazing. So now we're at the final stage of our journey. We need to make the logic, the state machine, the blueprints for the control of the traffic light. So, so a state machine, I'm not necessarily referring to Unreal Engine's built-in animation state machine, just in general, a, a programming or a, um, a design pattern of the state machine. A state machine is in a state and it can transition to other states, usually based on a condition. So in Unreal, I've got an enumerator here that has our four different light states. Off, green, red, and left. We're gonna add another state called elephant for the elephant crossing state. So back in the beginning in our plan, we determined that we only needed to build the base light and that we could just easily stack different lights on top of each other because they're going to be the exact same thing. And that is very true. I've created two blueprints. The first one is going to be for the individual traffic light mesh. And then the second blueprint is going to be two of the original blueprints stacked on top of each other. Here in the event graph, this is where all the magic happens in Unreal when it comes to making blueprints and logic. Event begin play, this is effectively the start. So on play, when we push the play button in the game or when this object is instantiated, it's going to do something, it's gonna ex execute something. And in this case, it's gonna execute a function I've made called set state and it's gonna take in a state. So the function of set state has a parameter of the new state. We set the property on the object. As you can see on the left side here, we've, we have a public property of the state. We're gonna set that state to what was passed in. Then we're gonna call the transition function. 
which is another function I made on this, uh, on this blueprint. So we'll go into the transition function. When we get into here, we're gonna do a switch statement on light state, so the state that we're in. And here are all of our states. So depending on what state is selected, we perform a certain action of setting the material. So this is the beauty of these material instances. We can dynamically swap these materials at game run time. So these, this set material function is a function on the, on the static mesh object component reference. I haven't made the set material function. It's part of the Unreal Engine, but I'm basically saying element at material four set to black when the state is off. When the state is green, set the element at index four to the instance, the green instance material. And what do we mean by element index? That is just the index of the materials on that static mesh. So I'll, I'll swap back to the viewport here, click on that static mesh. Here are all the materials in different spots. So I'm saying element four, this is what is going to be displayed. So I can actually just change that now to show you what it would look like as the elephant and look at that beauty. Isn't that phenomenal? And we, of course, we've, since we've added a new state, we need to make a new set material function. So I just will copy and paste that. We're setting the light and say, when you are the elephant, set the material MLED instance elephant. Pile, save. And that is all there is to it, to this traffic light blueprint. Now going into the traffic light stack. So as I said before, we have two components on the traffic light stack blueprint. There's the bottom traffic light and then there's the top traffic light. Pretty st straightforward. On the event graph, first we're gonna go into the set state function on the traffic light stack. So it's very familiar to the set state function in the individual blueprint, except that instead of just set, instead of setting the material, we're actually calling sets, we're calling the function set state of child twice, one for each traffic light. So when the state is elephant, which we will put down here, we can just copy and paste this. When the state is elephant in the bottom, traffic light, we want that state to be elephant. And on the top, we're also going to set that to elephant. Then we can go into these functions, set state of, or this function set state of child. This is just a generic function that calls set state of child, literally. The parent is just setting state on the child. And that is our state machine. That is our logic. So I've got a loop here. Every second, it's going to transition through the various different um, states that we have. So we just have to finally add a, another state for the elephant state. We hop back into the Unreal viewport, click play. We should get red, green, arrow, and elephant crossing. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next I feel time. I night by my side. Put me in for a riot Terrifying embers burn us so soft and tender